I want to talk about five things that make men weak. We're just going to jump right into this here. So the very first one is worrying about other men rather than focusing on yourself. This is probably the most important thing that I see so many guys doing, especially in the boyosphere, as I've renamed it, because I see so many guys that are worrying way more about what other men are doing, who they're dating, what kind of content that they're creating, rather than focusing on themselves. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't find some positive, inspiring role models. For example, when I was running one day, I was reading a book that Jess Lee Itzler wrote called Living with a Seal, and it talked about David Goggins and some of the crazy stuff they were doing. And at that time, I felt like I couldn't run a marathon. I thought I'd run some half marathons. I thought this is crazy. But when I listened to that book, it inspired me. I realized that I was being weak and that I was actually capable of running a marathon if I wanted to. And the very next day, I ran a full marathon, all right, without any training. I'd already been training a little bit there. But the point is that you can use other guys for inspiration, but don't worry about what they're doing and what they're not doing. If your focus is on other guys, then your focus cannot be on yourself. Instead, you need to be focusing more on yourself. What are you doing with your life? What are you accomplishing? Not what are they doing wrong? Don't be an armchair quarterback and instead focus on yourself. Now, the second bad habit that you're doing is worrying about women rather than focusing on yourself. Again, the boyosphere is just become a place of worrying about women, worrying about who women are dating? What do they have on their uh, social media profiles? What do they have on their Instagram? Are they on OnlyFans? It doesn't matter. Why does it matter to you? What does it matter if all of them are corrupt and you know three or fours, even using language like that is ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. Why are you worried about these people? Now, if you're dating a girl, you can worry about the girl you're dating, but don't worry about what other girls are doing out there. Don't worry about what women in general are doing. Don't worry about women if they're feminists. So what? Let them be whatever they are and focus on what you're trying to accomplish in life and what you want. If you don't want to date any girls that you don't like, don't date them. You don't have to go out there. No one's forcing you to do that. Instead, focus on yourself. Focus on improving yourself, becoming the man that you want to be, and don't worry about all this stuff. See, all this worrying about other people and worrying about what they're doing is going to cause you a great amount of emotional distress. You're going to be angry all the time. You're going to be sad. You're going to feel lonely. You're going to feel upset. If you're feeling those things and you're feeling hopeless in life, it's because you are worrying about other people. Because here's the thing about it. All negative emotions come from what? Unmet expectations. And when you worry about things you can't control, that is going to be the exact thing that creates these unmet expectations. Because if you expect the world to behave in the way that you want it to, you're going to be sorely disappointed and you're going to have negative emotions. If you want to get rid of that and actually become successful, stop worrying about other people. Stop worrying what they're doing. Stop worrying about what they're thinking. Instead, focus on you. The third one here is Stop building someone else's empire. I know a lot of you guys are working nine to five jobs. That's fine. I worked a nine to five job for plenty of time. But what I did figure out was that I needed to build something for myself. So I started investing in real estate. I bought my first house when I was 19 years old. Now I wasn't rich. I wasn't even making good money. I was making 20 bucks an hour at the time, but I figured out a way to do it. There's a guy in my Well That Never Runs Dry financial freedom program that he is currently owns three rental properties and he just turned 20. He was 19 years old when he owned three rental properties and he's in in the military, enlisted. He's not an officer. Now, if you want to jump on a call and learn how he did that and talk to him actually in the program, click the link down below and jump on a free 15 minute call and we'll see if you're a good fit for the program and you can work with me directly. I encourage you to do that. But regardless of whether or not you do that, the point is, is that you need to build your own empire. It's fine to work another job, a regular job, but you need to have a side hustle going. You need to be investing in real estate. You need to be doing something besides putting your money in your 401k in the stock market. That is not the way to become financially free. And that is not going to build any kind of real empire for yourself. Believe me, I did this myself. When I was starting out, I started out, like I said, I bought a property and I was buying some real estate on the side while I was working my regular job. And then eventually I started a blog. I started writing blog posts and it became a business, became a simple programmer. I ended up writing books. I ended up getting to a point where I had enough passive income where I could tell my boss, I quit. I moved to Hawaii. I got my time back. And now I'm a multimillionaire. I get $15,000 a month of passive income from real estate and about around eighty to $100,000 a month in my business. Now, how did I get there? I got there by building my own empire. I didn't just immediately quit my job and start doing it. I started doing it little by little. Even though I was tired after work, I still worked every day towards building my empire. So definitely put some bricks in the wall of your own empire. If you want some help, you want a whole system and framework for doing that, exactly what I did, click the link down below, jump on a free 15 minute call. That's all I have to say about that. The fourth one, you need a plan for everything. If you want to become financially free, you're not going to do it without a plan. I'm sorry, but it's just not going to happen. 
happen. When I was 28, I wanted to become financially free. I came up with a five-year plan. By the time I was 33, I was retired. That's it. It's that simple because I had a plan. If I didn't have a plan, I wouldn't be able to do that. You have to know if you want to become financially free, first of all, how much money do you need per month? Then you have to know how much money do you need total, your total net worth in order to generate that amount per month passively. Then you need to know how are you going to get there? So you have to come up with a plan all along the way. If you don't do that and you're just like most people and you hope and pray and you try to do the right things and make good financial choices, it's still not gonna work. Same thing with fitness. You wanna get a good physique? You wanna become ripped? You wanna become jacked? I have a plan, man. <laughs> I know what I'm doing when I'm going to the gym. I'm going for runs. I know what I'm doing. I know what my diet is. You think I could have a jacked physique if I didn't have a plan? <laughs> you think if you just say, oh, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna start eating better, that you're gonna, it's not gonna work. You've been there before. This is why it's not working for you. Same thing with finances, like I just said. I'm just gonna save money and not spend as much and invest smart. No, it's not gonna happen. Dating, same thing. You, if you don't have a plan, you're not gonna work that out either. You need to have a plan. How are you gonna improve your dating life? How are you gonna get the girl if you're looking for a wife or if you're just looking to become a playboy? How are you gonna do it? You need a plan. So come up with a plan for everything in your life that you wanna accomplish. That is the key. The fifth one, being afraid to speak up. I don't have any way to put it besides that you're a coward. The thing is, when you do speak your truth, when you tell people how it is or what you think, a lot of people are gonna get upset. They're gonna get butt hurt. They're not gonna like you anymore. The key is to do it with tact and diplomacy. You learn that by doing it. You become more diplomatic because you go through that process. And so the problem is that so many guys, they don't speak up. They have principles that they profess to live by, but especially in the boyosphere, I don't see anyone actually living by those principles. They see some crap that's going on. They don't say anything or they think that they're being a savior and saying things and they're just calling people names. Instead, you need to learn how to address issues and how to speak your mind and to say what is an issue. When you see something, call it out. You don't have to be nasty and name call people, but you can say, hey, I don't agree with this. That's not right. With women, guys, don't allow them to disrespect you. I say this all the time. If you're dating a girl, if, if a woman disrespects you, you say, hey, that's not cool. Don't talk to me like that. Whatever it is, call it out. Set a boundary. If that person continues, cut them out of your life. It's as simple as that. You have to speak up. Don't just say yes. Don't just agree to things that you, that you don't agree with. Instead, learn to tactfully express how you actually think and feel about a subject and you're not gonna be weak. You're not gonna be a coward. They might not like you at some time, but overall they will respect you and a lot more people in general will like you because they know that you're authentic and you speak the truth. But I see so many guys that are afraid to speak up. They're afraid to say anything. Now, don't interpret this wrong. That doesn't mean that you need to spew your political beliefs all over everyone. No one cares about that. That's not a good idea. You have to be smart about it. When someone is crossing your boundary, when it is an important situation where you need to speak your mind and speak the truth, say it. When something violates your principles and you're being put in a difficult position, say what your principles are and stand for them. When you need to defend people, when you need to defend ideas, defend those ideas. Be smart about this, but be willing to stand up. Don't be a coward. Really important that you do this. Now, if you guys want some help, like I said, with the financial aspect, click the link down below. And if you're in your 20s right now and you want to learn the six things I wish I knew in my 20s, click the link here. Watch this video next.